Hello guys, welcome to another video. This is a video that you chose to watch first. So thank you so much for voting on Twitter. And remember, follow me on Swift and Tips if you want to decide which video we like to see next. Anyway, today we will talk about Combine. Two years ago, Combine was introduced along with SwiftUI to create a new declarative API to process data through a flow of asynchronous events. But the question is, why? Why we need to learn Combine to start building applications with it? And what is the advantage over Imperative's APIs that we already have? Well, let me an introduction to Combine and show you the power of Combine in a really quick example. And we will cover a series of videos about all the things that you need to know about Combine. But for now, let's get started. My name is Pete and this, this is Swift Tips. Nowadays, we have different APIs to build applications for Apple platforms like iOS or macOS. APIs and tools like Notification Center, Grand Central Dispatch, Operations, Timers, URL Session, Core Data, Callbacks, Delegates, etc. etc. We have been using all of them for years. However, at some point, apps became harder to build because, well, today we have better specs in the devices to make fancier stuff. But also because we add more and more features to our apps with APIs that work pretty different in each other. That's why Combine entered in action in 2019, along with SwiftUI. For the case of SwiftUI, it's easy to see what is the goal. Keep building awesome UI with less boilerplate code and also centralize the source of truth for our apps. It's more or less the same for Combine, but oriented to data. We are looking for a way to centralize our business logic through a flow of asynchronous events one after other. In that way, it's easier to see what should happen before and after an event. In words of Apple, Combine is a declarative API, which means we have clear statement about what is happening with the outcome. Let's see an example. Let's see this imperative code that is explicitly saying what will happen here. We have a loop and we have a condition. But now look the declarative way. It's pretty straightforward to see that this array is filtered by a condition. So yeah, essentially it's the same, but the context is really straightforward to follow. Combine is also applying something called Functional Reactive Program or FRP for short. Combine is not the first framework using this paradigm. For many years, dev have used RxSwift or Reactive Swift to reach that. However, Combine is a first party framework, which means Apple gives full support for that and also is well integrated with SwiftUI. Combine made use of three concepts, publishers, subscribers, and operators. Let me explain these concepts and how is the flow using Combine. You pay a company to receive a drinking water service. The water goes through different filters and quality process, through pipes so that you can drink it. And finally, you can open your faucet and receive that water that will fall into your sink. Wink, wink. If we transform this into a combined environment, we have this. We have the publisher, in this case, that is the company providing the service. The subscriber that is paying the service and receiving the water. And in the middle, we have operators that filter the water and do more operations during the flow. All this is called has a subscription. And the water here is the data that we pass and transform from the publisher into the subscriber. Instead of deprecating the legacy APIs, Apple adapted to work with Combine. You can use Combine for networking, notifications, timers, UI events, decoding and encoding, etc. 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 This is just the beginning. Combine is a really powerful framework, 
and we will explore in details all the features and components to make awesome apps with Combine. I would like to show you one example and illustrate you the power of Combine. This is a Swift UI demo. Let me run this before explaining the code. This demo is really simple. It's just a Pokemon list with 151 first Pokemon. So yeah, are the ones that are from my generation. I know I'm old. We have a button to reload. There's no detailed screen or anything because the point of this example is to show you what is inside of this particular business logic. Before starting, just let me remind you that if you have problems understanding of the role objects or how things work with SwiftUI, I already created a series of videos about the state management and an intro to stacks. I will leave in the description all that information for you if it's required. Anyway, so as you already saw, we have a list and we have a Pokemon cell that is displaying the Pokemon information. Let me just show you what is inside of Pokemon. This is our model. We have a struct that is a Pokemon response because we are making a call to an API. You will see that in a moment. And we are transforming our Pokemon response into a Pokemon uh, object that we use in our list. So this is the one that we are displaying in the screen. All right, the important thing here is Pokemon Loader. Let's go back here. And this is the business logic of our application. First, we have an enum, we have errors for server error and no data, and an ID that I will explain to you in a moment. And now we have a class Pokemon Loader that is an observable object. And if you already notice, observable object is a protocol from combined framework. This is awesome. And this is just a sneak peek that SwiftUI is heavily using combined under the hood to all the operations for the state management. Let me go back for a moment. And we have also publish property wrapper that is wrapping every property here. And publish is converting all these values into publishers. Yeah, did you know that? All these values are being providing data. In this case, Pokemon data is a list of Pokemon and these two are flags, are booleans. So this means someone that subscribed to these publishers will receive this data. In this case, we can see that we decorate Pokemon Loader with observed object, which means this view Pokemon list is subscribed to Pokemon Loader. That's the way internally we are using combined under the hood already in the videos when we talk about state management. So it's pretty nice, but let's see more. We have other couple of things here, cancelables that we will talk more in details in a future video, but it's basically an object that is saving a token for the system in order to eventually, you know, cancel and delete the information about the publisher because this is, this is useful for the memory management of each subscription. And the rest is well known. URL session, you know already that, is the first party framework to make API calls or everything related to networking. And we have a URL. We are connecting in this example to Poke API. It's a free API that you can use for your projects if you want, you know, to just test something or, or if you want to build a Pokedex. Let me go back again to Pokemon list and let's see something really interesting here. Every time this view is appearing, we are calling Pokemon Loader.low. That's nice, but let's see what is inside of this. So here we have the magic of this application. We have first an state of is loading that we call every time we started this because we are telling the user that we will start loading something and we reflect that. As you can see, we have a C stack, which means that this value will be at the top of the screen when we are loading something. So here again, we have the cancelable object, but it's basically holding the publisher data. So. In this case, we have URL session. And look at that. This is the magic of combine. We are chaining many operations one after other. At the end, we receive the information in this closure, receive value. And then we assign Pokemon data to the final response. But what is happening here? First, we execute data task, but in this case, it's a data task publisher. So in other words, it's basically doing the same data task that you already know has a closure, but in this case it's exposing a publisher 
is doing the same, but it's returning a publisher. Then we use try map. It's a operator in combine to, you know, try to map something. Otherwise we return an error. In this case, we try to validate if we got a response, a valid response. Otherwise we return a Pokemon error dot server error, which means something happens and we won't continue. But if everything is okay, this return value will be the output data. All right, cool. So finally we decode or value. I already talked about Pokemon response. So yeah, we're trying to decode the data into type Pokemon response with a decoder JSON decoder. Once you decode, you map this value using a, in this case, a keypad. We will also talk about keypads pretty soon. But basically what we are saying here is that we don't want the whole Pokemon response. We want just results. And if you go back here, we already talked that we want just result, at least a Pokemon, which is this struct. And finally, we do uh, this operation with map. What is doing this? Well, it's just adding the ID or, you know, the Pokemon number to the Pokemon object because by default, this API is not providing that number. So we are generating that by ourselves and it will be useful for the images in the application. If we go back here, every image here contains a prefix of every Pokemon number. That's why we are using that anyway. Once we finish with all of that, then what happened? We need to receive our data on main thread. So we are calling this page q.main, which is the reference to use main thread because the thing that we will use in the screen, well, requires always the UI to be in main thread. And if you remember, your session works in a background thread. That's why this step is really important. If you don't provide this, well, you will see memory issues in your application. Anyway, after all these operations, we finally got sync. And in this case, sync is the subscriber of this publisher because it's receiving the information. Everything that is receiving the information provided by the publisher is called subscriber. And sync is one of the two built-in subscribers that Combine is providing. We will talk more about subscribers pretty soon too. Anyway, here we have just two closures. We have one closure to receive the value. So after all the processing, yeah, we just got Pokemon data uh, from the response. And here we receive the completion closure by saying, okay, whatever happens, the loading is finished. And then we check what is the completion state. In case of finish, this means that everything is fine. So no error and we do nothing. But otherwise, if we got a failure here, we in this case print the error and then we say that there is an error, error equals true. And that's it. As you can see, it's really easy to me to explain you every step because this is the magic of combine. We can identify really easy what is the first operation, what is the second one, etc., so on, and then finally what we will receive. But look at that. Compare that with the traditional way. I know you can do this in many ways, but let me show you this with the closure approach. You have here your session with data task but look you need to validate every step individually and as you can see i don't know you but this is for me hard to manage i know you can say hey but you can create also functions to do the same and try to keep it simple but with the power combined every operator here is returning a new publisher a new value containing the transformation of our data for free it's awesome to see that. And also, as you can see, this is the default way to work with Swift UI. Because at this point, we are just saying Pokemon data equals response. And that's it. Because Pokemon data is exposing to the subscriber this information. That's it. I don't have to do anything else. However, here we need finally to send the completion handler to someone else. And then expect this completion handler will be called in uh, main thread because we didn't set that. We also need to think about if we need to call this dispatch queue to main thread in this piece of code or in some other place. Yeah, there are a couple of things that this example could be really easy to solve, but believe me, if you have a big project or you're working in a company, it's really hard to try to maintain what is the source of truth, what is what are the right process to complete all these operations, but with combine, you can reach that really easy. And yeah, we will talk more about every piece of this process. This is the power of combine.
that's it for this video. We have a lot to cover for Combine, but believe me, Combine is really powerful. It's a really great API for you to build applications and centralize your data, your process, your events. We'll cover more about it and also related to Swift specifically, things like keypads, never type, closures, etc. But I will leave it up to you which video you would like to see next. Please let me know in the comments and don't forget to follow me again on Twitter, Swift and Tips, because I will publish a couple of polls about what is the next video that you want to see. That's it for me. Thank you so much and have a great day.